Have you seen or heard of this bag? And can you guess what is the highest price that have been paid for this bag? Here is a clue. This bag is made with extremely rare albino crocodile skin and painstakingly hand dyed to emulate the snowy appearance of the Himalaya mountains and hence is named the Himalaya Birkin bag. $500,000, that's the price tag that David Wanshia, a professional sports betting consultant, paid for the Himalaya Birkin bag in 2019. Does this shock you? Half a million US dollars. Imagine what else you could have bought with that money and how many people can actually afford it. This probably explains why Hermes is considered as the super luxurious and prestigious brand available only for the super rich in the world, with the Hermes business helping the Hermes family members to become one of the richest families in the world with a wealth of around $100 billion in 2023. So is Hermes a good business and a good stock? And can it continue to compound its business and the wealth for the Hermes family and the other shareholders? Today, we will be talking about all this for Hermes. In particular, we will talk about Hermes history and the Hermes family member management, the business models and products, the growth strategy, the revenue growth and industry tailwind, the other financials and capital allocations, the moods, valuation, and competition. Before we start, this is Fan Liang from Moneywise Smart. And here is our disclaimer that this is not investment advice and is for educational purposes only. It takes a long time to research and prepare the video. So your support will go a long way in motivating us to produce more investments videos like this. I would really appreciate if you can help to smash that like and subscribe buttons so that more people will get to know about this video. We have done a deep dive research into Hermes and set out our analysis in a 150 page report on Teachable. And today we will just cover the key points and investment thesis for this company. And if you are interested, you can get more information in the detailed reports. And another quick disclaimer. As many of you will know, Hermes is a French company and there'll be some French words being used in this presentation. I don't speak French, so please excuse me as I will be pronouncing most of the French words as English words, being fully aware that my pronunciations might not be right. So on Hermes, the quick story is that it has been a very steady and consistent compounder, compounding its revenue and profits year by year consistently for a long period. From 2009, its revenue has grown by a carga of 15% to 2022, or 14% to 2019 pre-COVID. And its net profit has grown even faster at a carga of 21% to 2022, or 18% pre-COVID. We will talk about RMS financials and capital allocation in more detail later. For now, let's quickly talk about its business and business model first. So RMS actually started out as a harness workshop in Paris by Thierry Hermes in 1837. So the business has been around for a long time, for almost two centuries now. Over the years, Hermes has been owned and managed many by the Hermes family members with Axel Dumas, the sixth generation member, running the company now as the executive chairman. Over time, Hermes has expanded its offerings to 16 matières, which mean trade in French, referring to the different product lines. And it has always have more than 50,000 product items at any point of time. The leather goods and cedary segment which includes bags, leather goods, and accessories and saddles, made up the most revenue at 43% of total revenue in 2022, followed by the ready-to-wear and accessories segment, which contributed 27% of revenue. As you can guess, Hermes products are expensive, although the executive chairman Axel Dumas considers it as costly instead of expensive. The products generally start at half a thousand dollars and go up to thousands for the scarves or tens of thousands for the clothes or shoes. And of course, with the Hermes bags like the Birkin and Kelly bags averaging at around $10,000 and going up to hundreds of thousands of dollars for one bag. The story of the Birkin bag is that in 1983, Jean Louis Domas sat next to the actress Jen Birkin on a plane. And he realized that she was struggling to keep her belongings together in her straw bag. Jen Birkin admitted that she couldn't find a leather bag that she liked. So in 1984, Dumas designed what we now know as the Birkin, a bag that he considered stylish and practical enough for the busy woman to keep her life together. The Birkin bag is very exclusive, where the exact process of buying is unclear. It used to have a waiting list of months or years, but now you have to be invited by Hermes to be able to buy, probably because you are a celebrity, you are well-connected, or you have spent lots of money on other Hermes products over time. Or you can try to buy in a resale market at a higher price. 
So this unclear process of buying a broken back actually is one of the best examples of the creation of aspirational value among the ultra rich people, leading to the high desirability for the broken bags and Hermes products, despite their high price tags. Hermes strategy is quite simple, which is based on creative freedom, where every year, a team inspires the designers to create products that amaze customers. And every store carries its own unique set of products for sale, where the store managers attend biannual podiums in France and compile their own collections for their stores for the fall, winter, or spring, summer collections. So each store would be unique and best meets the local expectations. After designing the products, Hermes bases its production and quality on craftsmanship, where Hermes hires and trains craftspeople over the years to pass down the craftsmanship know-how accumulated over six generations of Hermes members. About one third of Hermes employees are craftspeople, standing at about 7,000 craftspeople in 2022, with a majority of them booking with leather products and mostly based in France. These craft people carefully hand make the products using the best quality materials like leather and silk that Hermes team sources from around the world. To reward and retain this crucial talent and other employees, Hermes treats them well, giving them profit sharing bonuses and from time to time free shares in Hermes for every employee that has stayed with Hermes for more than nine months. These free shares come with about four to five years of resting period to ensure that the employees stay with the company. And each tranche is worth about a substantial 40,000 to 100,000 euros per employee based on the share price in October 2023. More than half of the objects made by Hermes are made in house in France instead of being outsourced to control quality. With Hermes vertically integrating its supply chain, acquiring businesses to secure sustainable supplies of high quality materials like leather. On distribution and sales channel, Hermes sells through its 300 stores located in the most prestigious locations around the world, with the most stores located in Asia Pacific, particularly China and Japan. Over time, Hermes has actually not grown its total store count to grow its sales. In fact, it has been keeping the store count stable or actually even reducing it to 300 stores. However, Hermes has been gradually reducing the number of concessionaires and running its own stores to control the distribution and the quality more, and also renovating its existing stores and expanding the existing store size. On growth strategy, it's very simple for Hermes. It focuses on creativity and launching new designs or collections over time to attract customers to its products and brands. It prefers to grow its revenue through volume growth, where it aims to grow its volume by about 6% to 8% every year. It would like to grow more, but it is restricted by how much craftspeople it can grow where it thinks it can only hire and train about 300 cross people maximum every year. Finding high quality raw materials can also be an issue sometimes. And at any point of time, Hermes always prioritizes the quality of its products and will only grow to the extent where it can ensure the quality of its products and not faster to not dilute its branding mode or more sustainable long-term growth. The revenue growth would also be driven minorly by the price increase of its products, mainly to pass on the increase in cost which include many raw materials and labor, which has been in a low single digit percentage recently. So a 6% to 8% volume growth, plus some price increase, will lead to a revenue growth in a high single digit or low tips in the long run. To some, this might not be the fastest growth, but it has been a pretty stable growth path for RMS of about 7% to 13% of revenue growth, excluding the impact of foreign exchange movements. As you can see from this chart, for the period between 2013 to 2019. With the revenue growth coming with a reasonable level of certainty, given the excess demand for its products in excess of supply, and with it being supported by industry tailwind, where the global luxury goods markets have been growing at about 6% carga historically over the long term, and the number of millionaires had grown by about 7% carga in the past. Going forward, we can reasonably expect the global luxury market to be bigger many years down the road, considering the rising global wealth over time, driven by world economic growth and inflation, the rising number of millionaires with increasing share of the global wealth, and the number of upper middle class, particularly in emerging economies, driven by urbanization and economic growth, which means that there will be more people with more money to spend on luxury goods, and seemingly shifting consumer preferences, with the younger generations this day starting to buy luxury goods earlier than the previous generations. Based on how we value Hermes, 
using the owner earnings yield methods, which we discuss later, we do not need to know the exact percentage of future growth, which we consider impossible to forecast accurately, nor is it required. Coming back to Hermes revenue growth, do know that as we have mentioned, Hermes has not really increased its store count over time. So its revenue growth had been mainly driven by the increase in average revenue per store to about 39 million euro per store in 2022, which had an impressive average profitability of about 11 million euro per store. In terms of profitability, Hermes gross profit margin has been broadly stable and has slightly increased to 71% in 2022, supported by its pricing power and its cost markup pricing model. Although it does get impacted by foreign exchange movements over time, which Hermes fully hedges. On operating profit, Hermes main cost is payroll expenses for its employees, which do not grow as fast as its revenue. So Hermes has been experiencing operating leverage with its operating profit margin improving to 41% in 2022. Net profit margin has improved accordingly, although do know that part of the increase in net profit margin in 2020 to 2022 was driven by a drop in effective tax rate during those years, which will be more of an one-off factor. So the latest net profit margin stood at 29% in 2022. For the remaining points of this video, you can check them out at our multi-bagger research series. At MoneyWise Smart, we do deep dive research into wonderful companies to own for the long term. We have provided some of this research for free in our free research series. So definitely check them out at the link provided if you want to invest in good companies. I promise you will really benefit a lot from this research. If you have enjoyed this video, do hit the like button now and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you will be notified of our future videos. Do also join our Facebook group where we discuss interesting investment concepts and businesses. Thank you for watching and see you in our next video.